Now we want to look at counters in VHDL. We have been looking at finite state machines. And if you think about a finite state machine, what it does is it produces an output <clears throat> based upon a clock edge and also past values that it's been in, okay? And sometimes inputs. Well, a counter is a finite state machine, okay? And if you think about a counter, you know, it's, it's exactly what you think about. It's a counter, okay? So if you had a 4-bit counter, it's going to be like 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1. And that's going to go up to 1, 1, 1, 1, and then it's going to roll over, okay? Counters <clears throat> are a finite state machine because as you move through these outputs, you are going to need to know where you were before. Okay, you can't go to 0010 unless you knew you were in 0001. So that necessitates knowledge of the past. That necessitates a finite state machine. Furthermore, you want to do this on a clock edge. So you want to have a clock come into your system and you want to do the counting based on that edge so that it's synchronous. So you could easily, maybe easily, create a three process model for a counter and implement it and you would be set. Here's the only trick. The way that we are doing this is that every unique output is going to be a state, right? So that means for this right here, this is going to be a state, <coughs> zero, 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 zero. And then this is also going to be a state, zero, zero, you know, we'll call it S1. And then this is going to be a state, S, S2. And each of these output values are states. Okay? So just in something as simple as a 4-bit counter, you would actually have 16 states. Now that's not impossible to implement. You know that that's fine. The problem becomes when you try to build larger and larger counters. Counters can be, you know, any counters are typically large, such like 8 bits, 16 bits, 32 bits. How many unique codes does an 8-bit counter have? 2 to the n, 2 to the 8. It's got 256 unique outputs. So that means if you use the three process model, you have to create 256 unique state names as a user enumerated type, and you will actually have to do the next state logic for each and every one of those, and you'll have to have an output for each and every one of those states. If you do a 16-bit counter, what are you at? It's like unbelievable, 60,000, 64,000. It gets out of hand immediately. So what we do is we treat a counter as a special case of a finite state machine. What makes it special is that we always take the output and we increment by one. That means we can potentially create a counter using a single process and it will still synthesize as a finite state machine. So what we do when we model counters in VHDL is we try to take advantage of a couple things. One. We try to take advantage of one process to do it. In this process, we have to be very careful because we are going to have it be sensitive to the rising edge of a clock. We're going to have it have an asynchronous reset, just like in a finite state machine. And we also want to take advantage of plus one. So we are going to start using the numeric STD package because what we want to do is we want to do this whole thing of count the value of the count Okay, the value of the count is going to get assigned the count that it was plus one. So we want to try to move toward a more traditional programming construct. Okay, there are a, this sounds as simple as you could possibly get. Would you agree? S as simple as you get. There are a variety of issues that you encounter immediately upon doing this that if you don't walk through it, then it just makes counters seem impossible. Once you walk through it, it's super easy. Okay, so the first thing that's going to happen <clears throat> is that this whole count equals count plus one in the standard package and even in the 1164, you can't have an output port on the right side of a signal assignment. Okay, so that means that if you have a counter, okay, you have this counter and you have th this is what your output's going to be is a four bit bus called CNT. <clears throat> you cannot use that signal name, that port name, on the right side of a signal assignment. And it's like, oh, that's horrible. So the first thing that you have to do is you have to immediately create some internal signal that will allow you to be used on the right side of a signal assignment, and then at the very end, assign that back to 
the actual port, okay? So we might call this count I for internal, and then we could do that. So that's the first thing you have to think about. The second thing that you have to think about is this whole notion of the plus sign. What is the plus sign supported for? In the standard logic package, okay, you don't actually get the plus sign, right, for standard logic. What you get it for is, you actually don't even get it. What you get with the standard logic 1164 package is just the result data types, okay? Then what we do is we bring on numeric STD as a package. But numeric STD only defines that plus sign for types signed and unsigned. So we have a real trick that we have to account for, and that is this, what we want is we always want the output port to be standard logic vector. But the plus sign in here, this guy right here, isn't defined for that type. So we, we could conceivably say, all right, I'm going to create an internal signal that it is supported for. And if you do numeric STD, it's supported for signed and unsigned. OK, so that's fine. But then we would have to typecast it back to standard logic vector. And that's perfectly acceptable. Okay? What would make a counter even better, even better, is to use an internal variable that takes care of everything for us, such as being supported with the plus sign, and also having the ability to have negative numbers if you wanted to, and also having no issues with comparing to the end of a range. Okay? So for example, if you wanted to count up to 10,000 and then start over again, 10,000 isn't a multiple of two to the n, right? So what happens is that you would have to watch it get to 10,000 and then set it back manually. So we have to have compares that work also. So of the list of things that we want is we want an internal counter variable, okay, internal variable of type integer. The integer is our buddy. It is easy to use. It is supported with the plus sign. It has positive and negative numbers. It has easy compares that are always supported. And if we can do this counter with an integer, all that's left is casting it back, casting the value back to standard logic vector and having that be the output of our system. Sound good? All right. So what we're going to do, if you look in the book, what I did is I built a storyline of different types of counters, ultimately getting to what we're going to jump to immediately. <clears throat> I did that to try to build up the knowledge of all the different issues that you run into. <clears throat> Number one, you could have an output port of type unsigned. Okay? And you could then use numeric STD, and you could directly assign to an internal variable of unsigned, and you don't have to cast. The problem is we never do that. We always have our ports be standard logic vector. So that does, we don't want to ever have our ports be unsigned. Then what happens is you could use standard logic vector if you do that library that treats everything as unsigned. And you could potentially use it on that. But then that, that only works for unsigned counters. And we, maybe we want a signed counter. Okay, so that has some limitations. And then what you finally get to is motivating the use of an internal variable of type integer. And the biggest trick is just how do we figure, how do we get it back to a standard logic vector for the output port? Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at this and see if we can do it. So I have started myself a model sim project, and it's called counter 4-bit up. Okay, so what we're going to do is we are going to take a look at this test bench and try to get a feel for what we're looking at. So we are looking at a component called counter 4-bit up. It has a clock and a reset, of course. It has a count, CNT, all capitals, that is a 4-bit standard logic vector. That is the output of this thing. And we want this thing to just count from 0, 0, 0, 0 up to 1, 1, 1, 1. It's pretty simple. So let's go ahead and see how we can do this. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new file in my project. And I'm going to call this puppy counter, oh, cappers, counter 4 bit up. Why don't we do 4 bit counter up? Can't start it with a number. You got to have a, a letter. Okay, so let's go ahead and let's start doing some copying and pasting. First thing I want to do is I want to grab my libraries. Okay, I'm going to go into counter 4 bit up. 
I need the standard logic 1164 to support standard logic vector, and I want numeric STD to potentially support the plus sign. Negative. I mean, wrong. <laughs> Incorrect. We actually aren't even going to use the plus sign from this. What we're going to do is use the plus sign supported in the standard package for integers. Okay? Integer gets integer plus one. What we're going to use out of numeric STD is type conversions. Okay? We need to be able to convert from these two packages from integer back to standard logic vector. Okay, so now let's get the port definitions. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to copy that and I come back into here. And let's go up, 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 up. So I'm going to say entity, whoo, entity, and then I'm going to go paste. All I got to do is slap in my is and my ent entity. And now I do my big word, architecture. And then I go, oh, look at this. I can't type that anymore. I'm going to copy that. I'm going to come down here, and I'm going to say architecture, boom, underscore arc of boom is. Come down here, begin, come down here, end, architecture, boom. Let's warm up the compiler. So I'm going to say compile all. Feeling pretty good. It's awake. Now at this moment in time, what I would like to do is begin. <clears throat> I need an internal variable of type integer that I can use to make my counter. At the end of that, I will then typecast it back to standard logic vector. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to do this. Signal. I'm going to call it count int. Int stands for integer, or it could stand for internal, or it could stand for both. But I'm not going to type int int. Okay. That's stupid. So I come along, and I am going to do the following. It is of type integer, and at this moment in time, I'm just going to say that's it. Okay. Now, I'm going to come along, and I'm going to start my process. And we're going to run into a couple different things that are interesting as we do this. Process. What, who, when is in the sensitivity list? This is a finite state machine that is going to operate based on Clock and reset, <clears throat> and we it is a special case, okay? Because we don't really necessarily have inputs that we're going to respond to within the process. We're going to allow the synthesizer to understand that there could be synchronous inputs, okay? So you are absolutely right. Clock and reset are what are in the sensitivity list. All right, let's see what happens. Begin. What do you think the first thing that we have to do for our counter is? We got to have a reset condition, just like a finite state machine. Remember, all the, all the bits of the counter are coming out of D flip-flops. So if you have a 4-bit counter, that's 4 D flip-flops. If you have a 64-bit counter, that's 64 bit 64 D flip-flops. So I'm going to reset all those D flip-flops by saying this. If reset equals 0, then I'm going to do the following. This counter, this process, is only assigning to count int. So I'm going to assign to this thing a integer value. Do you remember how you designate an integer? You put ticks around it, you put quotes around it. Integer takes on a value from like negative 32 million billion up to positive 31 billion billions. You just put the number. Okay, so I could say eight if I want to. You know I want to say zero. So if I get a reset, I'm going to go ahead and just set my internal counter variable to zero. Then I do this. I say else if and now I'm going to make an assignment based upon the rising edge of a clock. So I'm going to, you want to use the, the uh, function, rising edge clock. I do too. It feels good to use it. So I said rising edge of clock then. And at this moment, <clears throat> I have a, my first situation. Counter is an integer. An integer in VHDL is 32 bits wide that can count up to a massively high number, and it can count down to a massively negative number. Okay? What's the maximum decimal value that we want to count to in a 4-bit counter? Well, this is a 4-bit unsigned counter. 0, 0, 0, 0, up to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 15. It's 15. We're going to count to 15 and then roll back. We have to do what is called range checking. So the first thing that we need to do before we increment is we got to make sure that this thing is not at the maximum value. Because if it is, I need to set it back to zero. I don't want a 4-bit counter running 
up to 31 billion counts. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to say if I'm going to nest this in there, count int is equal to 15, then what should I do? Instead of incrementing it, I'm going to set this baby back to, I'll get that j in a second, 0. If it was not equal to 15, that meant it was something else, <clears throat> and I should just increment it by 1. So what I can do is I can say else, let's do count underscore int gets assigned count int plus 1. This works on the right side of the signal assignment because this is not a port. It is an internal signal. I do an end else, and if, and in any other situation, all I want to do is hold the last value. So the way that I model not doing any assignments is with nothing. So I do this sort of thing, and then what I want to do is end my process. And at this moment, I want to compile and make sure that this looks good before I do the type conversion, the last step. Compile, select it. OK, does anybody see it? It's right there. Beauty. I go boom, boom. Compile, select it. Yes. At this moment, I have a counter in the form of an integer. But I don't want that. I don't want to assign it back to count. How do I do it? Here's the trick in it. It's confusing when you first see it, but after you see it once, it's not that big of a deal. The trick is that there's no direct typecast between integer to standard logic vector. You have to do it in two steps. You have to first come along and you have to convert the integer to unsigned. And that package, that value is in what? That's in the numeric STD. And what I do is I give it the variable I want to convert from, the integer. But the integer is huge. And I'm going to convert it into literally ones and zeros. So I have to tell it how many bits I want to convert that 32-bit integer into. So I say to unsigned, that's the name of the function. I give it the integer, and then I give it the number of bits that I want. And that now count converts it to unsigned. Then I want to take this value, and I'm going to now convert it to standard logic vector. So the way that that one is, this typecast is standard logic vector. That's just the name of it. It doesn't actually have two before it. And in this form, I have done a two-step conversion where I went integer to unsigned and then unsigned to standard logic vector, and I assigned it back to my port. So let's see if this works. Compile selected. It did. There's only one last thing to do, and that's test to see if this simulates. So I come in here, and I'm going to fire up my test bench. Let it blink. Let it blink. I'm going to come in here. I'm going to do add to wave signals in design so I can see a little bit below. And I want to nuke my test benchers. Look what's underneath below. I've got clock, reset, count, and integer. And let's run this for 100 nanoseconds. I say boom. And look at this. Notice that it's counting perfectly. Notice that count int is an integer. And then notice that. As I run this more and more and more, it will eventually get to the point where it counts up to 15, and it then rolls over. Look at the 4-bit binary value, though. It gets up to 1111, gets set back to 0000, and onward it goes. That integer is 32 bits during simulation. Once you hit synthesize, it gets compacted down into 4 bits that are implemented as a 4D flip-flop finite state machine. Okay, that is a counter using a single process.